To begin our dragon eye drawing, you should first try to get this in front of you. Either print out this handout in the lesson materials or get it on a screen in front of you so you can decide which kind of style you're going to choose for your dragon eye. It's important that you decide in advance because you need to decide what shape your scales are going to be so you can create these patterns of scales. You're only going to choose one and it could be a variation of more than one eye. You could have this scale pattern and maybe the inside of your eye looks like that. Or maybe it looks like that. Today for my demonstration I'm going to be focusing on this kind of scale pattern design. But I think I am going to use the middle of this eye because I just like the way it looks. So to get started we need to make a big circle in the middle of, of our paper. Now, when I say big, I mean big. Like, it needs to be like this big in the middle of your paper. This is a bowl from my kitchen. If you don't have anything to make a circle with this big, if you have a bowl from your kitchen about this size, it would work perfectly. But if you don't have anything, you could just freehand a big circle. I'm going to use the bowl since I have one. You need to get a circle in the middle of your paper about this size. It doesn't have to be a perfect circle, so you could freehand it as long as it's pretty close, it's good enough. Some of it's going to get erased anyway. It's just to give us a, an indicator of size so we can get everything in the right place. So after we get that finished, we're going to make a mark about halfway on each side of the circle. We're going to use those marks to determine where our eyelid is going to go. So we're going to start at this mark and make a curve all the way over. Now I'm drawing the one type of dragon eye, this one. So the, the, your, the shape of your, of your eye might be a little different, might be slanted differently. Like for this eye, you'd want to start the shape to go more like this way. Mine's more kind of straight across this curve. So I'm making a curve this way. And I will do the same thing on the bottom. Make a big long curve going this way. So you imagine this is the eyeball and we're putting an eyelid on it. You notice I'm making a lot of scruffy line, sketchy line, working out where I want that curve to be. Okay, so now that we have this, I'm going to extend this line out a little bit this way. Both of those lines. I'm going to extend this one a little bit this way. Now on the t above this curve, I'm going to make a parallel curve. I'm going to follow that same curve and make another one right above it. And I'm going to have it go back like this. The one below will do the same thing to make our eyelid. But we'll, on this end, we're going to meet this line and stop just like the other one. The front of the eye is a little bit different than the rear of the eye. So we need to draw them a little differently. Okay. So now we have the kind of the basic shape of the eyelids. Now I'm going to draw the pupil inside of the eye. Now I said I'm just going to use this design instead of this because I think it's a little more exciting. I'm going to start by making a line right in the middle. And then on either side I'll put a curve like this on either side of that line, about in the middle, but in the middle of the eye. And now I'm going to start at these little tips of these lines and I'll make a curve going to the top. I'll do the same thing going to the bottom. And then I can take my eraser and I can erase the middle of this, this line. Inside of this eye is going to have 
some little spaces in it, so I'll go ahead and draw those in. Now a lot of times with dragons and fantasy creatures, sometimes they have a second eyelid. Like sometimes you see the dragon opens his eye this way before he opens it this way. So I'm going to put the beginning of a second eyelid in the front and back of the eye. And I'm going to put some lines to give it some uh, visual interest. To make it look like maybe the eye is, that eyelid is folded up a little bit. And it could go this way, but it's, but it's open right now. Okay. So our next step is to begin drawing our scales, but before we do that, we actually should get rid of this curve at the top and bottom because we don't need them anymore. And they're going to get in our way when we go to draw our scales. They were just to tell us, this circle was just to tell us about how big our eye should be. to give an indicator of the shape of it so we could get the eyelid in the right place. Now that we've done that, we don't need all that line anymore. So now we have this. This is the front of the eye. I'm going to put a little thing here in the, like the tear duct right here in the front of the eye. Okay, now it's time to start drawing scales. Because I'm doing this, my scales are going to be Kind of an angled, kind of an angled curve going backward. And the scales closest to the eye are going to be smaller. So I'm just going to start making these angled bumps going back across the entire top of the eye. And I'll extend them a bit all the way to the end of that line. Now, I'll actually extend a few this way as well. Now I'm going to, when I create the next row of scales, I'm going to take, I'm going to make them the size of two scales. I'm going to make them larger. So I'm going to start at the end of this scale, come up, and drop it right at the end of the next scale. I'll do the same thing all the way across. Starting at one scale, coming over two scales, and putting it at the end. Starting there, ending there, starting there, ending there. Starting, ending, starting, ending. I'll put another scale there. I'll put another little one right here. We're not going to be running the design all the way to the end of the page like we did back here. It'll stop. I mean, if you could, you could add extra scales and finish it off if you want to. Okay, so now that we have this established, for the next scale, we're going to make a mark right in the middle of each scale. Right in the middle, and that's about the middle at the edge of the page. And I'm going to start one over here. So I'm going to make a bump and end it here. Now I'm going to start here and end here. So I'm staggering the scales, so now this scale is in between these two. I'll do this, I'll do the same all the way up. Well, I like that line very much, let's fix it. I'm going to come up a little higher, drop it there, starting there, come up, dropping it there, starting there, dropping the line there. So I'm making consistent scaly pattern, starting there, dropping it there, starting there, ending there, going off the page. Do the same thing again. One more time anyway on these. Starting here, dropping it there. Starting here, ending there. Now you're going to do any scales you do, you'll have the same, you'll be using the same theory. You'll be putting a row, of, a row of scales, and then in between those scales, you'll be putting the next scale. Okay, just like you're doing here. Starting there, 
ending there. So now we're in between these two scales. Starting here, ending here. This is in between these two. Starting here. I'm going to jump one there. Normally I'd, I'd end it there, but it seemed like it'd be a very small scale, so I went ahead and jumped over. No. The bottom of the eye is the same deal. I'm going to put some circular shapes here just to establish a jumping off point for the scales that are going to go in the other direction. First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to make a row of small scales on the bottom of the eyelid just as I did on the top. And then I'm going to start Let's close these off. I'm going to start here. I'm going to make a scale that goes to there. And I'm going to, again, I'm going to take up two scales, two of the small scales, for every one of these big scales on the next row. I'm going to have that come right up under there. It's just going to tuck against that line. I'm going to make a scale here too. Now, I'm going to mark the top of my scales on the new row. I'm going to make scale, 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 scale. Notice I'm dragging these out a bit. As I get them farther away from that, I'm making them, I'm making them larger. I don't need too many more scales for this drawing because we're not drawing the entire dragon face. We're just drawing the dragon eye. So I'm going to put another scale here. Maybe one more here. I think I'll leave it at that for now. If I want to add something later, I can. So if you have a marker at home, this is a good time to, to bold up your lines. The lines, line work that you've done so far. I'm going to go over everything. If you don't have a marker, you could use a colored pencil. A dark, a black colored pencil, for instance. You don't necessarily have to do this. It's not going to make or break your drawing. It just makes it look a little bolder and more interesting. We go over these lines again and make everything stand out before we start coloring. Notice I'm not going over the exact. As I trace over these, I'm kind of deciding as I go that maybe this line would be better this way. So I'm just kind of like improvising a little bit as I trace over these. If there's a part of it that I think, well, I can make it better now that I'm adding in the ink, I can make it look a little better, then I'll do that. I'm going to have this area black. So I'm going to go ahead and speed up the video so this part of tracing, you don't have to watch it for 30 minutes. Here we go. So we have a pretty well-drawn dragon eye. You notice I deviated from my original plan when I played these, put the ink down, so that okay, let's. I found a way as I was drawing to make it look even better. So improvising is good. You can change things as you go. I'm erasing some extra lines before I start talking about color to get them out of our way. a lot of extra lines because I did end up deviating a bit from my original plan and I made things a little different as I was adding the ink. I 
and that's okay. We should be able to change our mind as artists as we go, make things better. Sometimes we make them worse when we change our minds. Fill in those little spaces a little bit there. Okay. So when we're using ink, when we're using color, rather, we are going to be making a transition in our scales. You notice in these scales, they kind of have their light around the edge and they're darker in the center and in between the scales. So I am going to start off, now you can do this with colored pencils, you can do this with watercolor, or you can do this with markers like I have here. You could even do it with crayons. So I'm going to take, I'm just going to start off with this light orangey color. And I am going to start coloring in some of these scales. I may go over a lot of them. Let's see how far this orange lasts. going to do these first this short row of scales and the one right above it so I can show you the process of making this look more dimensional with color. Now if you don't have any color at home you could use shading with your pencil to get a nice interesting effect. So now I'm going to take a darker slightly darker color And the scales are going to get filled in, except for the edge of the scales. I'm just putting it in the center of the scale. On this first row, I'll go ahead and put them here too. As you can see, it's already making the row of scales stand out a little nicer. Now, the ones above it, you're going to do the same thing. You're going to make, now you could do this, say you only have, let's say you have one color and you need to make all this with one color. Well, you can make these dark areas with your pencil. You could go in with a pencil and you could, you could do some shading on top of the color to make, to darken those areas up. Let's say, oh, I want to make, um, I want to make red scales, but I've only got I've only got red and orange. I don't have two shades of red. Well, it's easy. Make the make orange is lighter. Orange is going to be lighter than red. So you make the scale orange. So just the edge of it is orange and most of it is red. Look at the same dramatic effect as this. Let's just do the center with the darker, whatever the darker color is that you're using, you need, you're going to need two shades here. Whether if you're doing it in black and white, you'd be going over everything lightly with gray and then going over it again in these areas with a darker, with a darker gray. Okay. So you can see what's happening here. These are really starting to pop out. I'm going to do a row above it again. Continuing on, the markers work really good for this because they're fast. Watercolor would work really fast too. You have to be a little more careful about the bleed factor if you're using watercolor. Colored pencils, you can get the same impact, same effect. It's just going to take a little longer to lay it down. I do one more row of this. So again, I'm getting down in between the scales. Okay, I grabbed the wrong one. Yeah, it's a little bit darker than I wanted. Back to the one we were using. So I'm just leaving the edge, that original lighter color. I'm getting in between the scales with a darker color and I'm coming up around and just leaving that edge. Oh, 
all the way across the same way. I'm going to speed up the video again so we can get past this part. Okay, so now we have these shaded scales where we have a light color on the edge and a darker color in between the scales and on the rest of the scale. It really gives it a sense of dimension, makes them pop out. And it's really not that hard to do. It just takes a little work, a little time, but it's completely doable. Okay, so for the eyelid, I'm going to go on with a little bit of orange. At the bottom part of the eyelid, I'm going to do a little bit of orange. And I'm going to go back over that. A little highlight yellow at the top of it. Blend that orange and yellow together. Give it, give it, make that eyelid have more of a rounded feel to it. By combining those two colors. Okay. So for the main area of my eye, I'm going to go with a green. I'm going to leave a little bit of white space right around that center thingy because I think it'll look interesting. The markers, it's, sometimes it can be tricky to get the color to lay down evenly. Colored pencils are a lot better for that sort of thing, especially in a big area like this. In small areas, it's hard to see that the color is not laying down as evenly. When you get into a big area like this, you start to see the little inconsistencies. It's okay. Little inconsistencies, okay. We're not perfect. And my marker is getting a little dry. So I'm just going to try to get through this. Time for some new markers. Okay, so let me decide what color this is going to be. I'm going to get in there with a couple of different shades of this pink looking color. First I'll go over it lightly with this, get a light color in there. Uh, if you don't have all these colors, it's okay. You could use like a, like a if you wanted to go with these colors, you could just use a red colored pencil very lightly to get a pink. I'm going to go back in with another color just to set it off a little bit. Okay. I think I need a darker green around the edges of the eye. So I'm going to go back in with this, just to give it another little more sense of dimension. 
and make things stand out. You have dark colors next to light colors. I think I'll put some crackle in here like it's a crazy bloodshot dragon eye. Okay, so this is our dragon eye. You can see the different dimensions of color really make things stand out. Maybe I'll go in this area a little more, just to make it stand out a little more. That's up to you how you color your dragon eye. I think I'm going to get some darkness in here next to this. The whites, I'm not liking the whites so much. And as artists, we change our minds like that. And you will too as you go. Yeah, I think that looks better. So here's my red dragon eye with a green eyeball in the middle of all those red scales. And this is complete. And see, since, as you can see, I'm not going all the way to the edges. The whole idea is just to draw a dragon eye with some scales around it like this. So I hope you have fun drawing your dragon eye. And I will see you next time.